Are we on air? Are we live? Oh, yeah. We're all right. Well, We're Iowa talking. City, great. Hey, all mother you, funners. Mother funners, all you kids out there. County. Yeah, this is a shout out to everybody in Johnson County lockdown right now. <laughs> Everyone who's in there on any trumped up charge from the Iowa City PD for just walking around being alive in a college town. Screw that. <laughs> OWIs. OWIs, all that stuff. Iowa City Police Department makes money off you kids. <laughs> and it's how they make their money. It's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. That's let's be active and messy. I'm building me a home. 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 This earthly home. Short and sweet. And I'd like to introduce you to my good friend and van mate, the impeccable and very disrespected Jarrett Mitchell. Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Alright, I'm gonna leave this in the stand just so that it works a little bit better. Uh, we've been on the road here for a little over a week and it has been great. It's really nice to come here to Iowa City where we have all our friends and family here with us. And uh, yeah, let me just unwind that. It makes it a little easier if I can just kind of move around a little bit. We've been on tour for a while, for about a week, a little over a week, and uh, we've been playing with the Shadow Government, with uh, William Elliott Whitmore, with uh, Paradise Island from uh, Oakland, California. We've been on tour with our friends Dallas and Kevin, who've been with us. Curtis was with us for a couple days, and it's been really fun. It's been a lot of fun. I've been uh, 
kind of emceeing the events at all the shows and kind of just uh, talking to people about kind of the goal of what we're doing with our tour, which is just to kind of uh, bring people together in a community of audio environment and friendship. And uh, I think we're kind of doing that now. I'd just like to thank you guys all for coming down to the Record Collector. I uh, would also like to say that my mother, who's here in the audience, made this jacket for me on a very short notice. She's right back there, she's waiting. Yeah. I love you, Mom. Thanks for making it. Everyone. by the Mississippi River. Um, I'm from Freeport, Texas. Originally, I'm from Cedar Falls, Iowa. I was born in Lee County. Uh, I have uh, the state of Iowa tattooed on my wrist. Uh, I consider that to be where I'm from. Let me, let me see. It's right here. Keokuk, right there, southeastmost point in Iowa. More southeast than Montrose. Music is it takes you places. Like on tour. On tour of the world and on tour of your mind. I could take these ideas that I had about people and art and sculpture and social sculptures and then take them and throw it all together and call it Let's Be Active. And uh, it's confusing. It is confusing to a lot of people. Uh, but uh, that's okay. The real intent of Let's Be Active is just to spread a message of the social relationships all being interconnected and that an individual is a person within society and uh, that an individual can do things and that each individual is important within the context of the broader society. Um, have I met Jared? To truly understand what guy Jared was, he was the guy with the MXPX tattoo in between his shoulder blades. Preacher son kid. He was, uh, he was staying at my house in a tent on the, on the floor. Oh, he's, he seems like a good guy. You know, you know, Dallas, nobody's perfect, but, you know, Jarrett's, Jarrett's a real good guy. I trust him with my last piece of meat. Well, to talk about Let's Be Active is to talk about Jarrett Mitchell. He's the founder, mouthpiece, <coughs> the main brain behind LBA. Yeah, and I figured tonight will be a good kind of dry run. Well, not dry run, yeah. it's obviously a live run, but... Yeah, definitely everything should stay crack a lack in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah just like, keep moving, that's, yeah, the main thing. Like, even if it's, I mean, I don't know what people would be doing, like, what... Because people aren't going to know what to think about what you're doing, which yeah, is yeah, awesome. Yeah, so, but just, like... Whatever it is, yeah, just keep it rolling. I think people will be receptive to yeah, it. Yeah. I think they'll want to be active. That's right. Thank you. You look like that. Man, you almost look like that. Our wonderful friends here in the front just pointed out my outfit, which uh, references a wonderful Beatles album, uh, yeah. Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, which we all love. It was one of the great crowds. To think that George Martin recorded that on a four track is pretty crazy. It's a beautiful, beautiful sound of Adam. We're doing a very simple Let's Be Active contest. It's so simple. And it kind of promotes one of the base values of Let's Be Active, which is the fact that each of us live in our human body that uh, we walk around every day in. And uh, what I'd like to do is have a, just a push-up contest. And uh, if anybody thinks they can do any push-ups, just who can do the most push-ups, whoever can do the most push-ups will win this poster. So the, the, the less people come up and help out, the longer I'll be up here. Yeah. 
Anybody? Wait, do you want to have a push up contest again? Yeah. yeah. Man, what's your name? Matt. Matt. We have Matt here. Matt, what's your name? and then it's progressed kind of to the incarnation that we have today with me and Luke specifically but then a kind of a rotating cast of drummers um, mostly because we couldn't find one drummer that would want to play all the shows with us or spend that much time with me and Luke. This nugget's called Noble Flavor.
what does it mean to me? Well, I think the mouthpiece of the tour was Let's Be Active uh, because he had the open forum of just an, a direct dialogue with the audience with question and answers, uh, with representing his ideas, which I believe his ideas represented all of our ideas and he was able to present it in a form that we could all appreciate and whether anybody else did or not that didn't matter because uh, although of course you want people to listen when you're saying something important realistically you're saying it for yourself and for your friends This, the other message of Let's Be Active that we're trying to bring to the whole country is to just please end American colonialism now. I think we can bring all our troops home, back to America where everyone loves them, and we can live in our country and begin to sort out our own differences here instead of uh, creating larger problems abroad. I've never actually just like showed up at someone's house and practiced and left, but these guys seem pretty cool. They... Oh yeah, what, 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 one guy that lived there, but... Um, it's totally cool last night. <laughs> Got out of practice with uh, Mr. Whitney here. With Slays. He, he's playing tonight. He's playing on kind of like a little, like a child's drum set. But not only is it a child's drum set, but it's like a child's girls drum yeah, set. But he's gonna make as big a sound as he can. Joe, where are we headed? We're yeah, headed to the Love Garden, the Garden Record Store to watch uh, Will Whitmore do a in-store uh, here in Lawrence, Kansas. Will, I met. He came to stay with us for like. Uh, three months maybe or something it was a uh, really great uh, summer it was an amazing summer him and Luke uh, were actually like always 
They were at every show I and, went to. And what's their relationship? They're cousins. Luke and Will are cousins um, from Montrose, Iowa. You guys work together, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just heard about this. Me and Will did work together. Uh, I had a job at Hardy's where I worked in the front line. Uh, I would work the front, he would work the back, and... Uh, Oh, that sounds great. Yeah, I would work the front and he would work the back. Therefore, my father and my aunt are brother and sister. So that's how Will and I are related. Cousins. Yeah, thanks for coming out here on a beautiful uh, Saturday evening. Wait, is this it? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, good, good, good. <laughs> Dallas, this makes me so uncomfortable, man. Really? I Y'all wanna take a left? Jan can't even put his driver's license on. No laws. No laws. <laughs> no laws. Laws. Except for the laws of the government. Fine, fine, government. Yeah, and what a beautiful so, government. Luke's it driving is. without a driver's license. Not that got not that I let like expire anything. The government revoked it from me because I like to get a little sauce and spin around. I get to go to classes. I get to learn about how I'm a level two out of three levels of alcoholic. Level two meaning that I drink in public on a at least once a week basis. There is alcohol in my fridge, and when I go out, I partake in some sort of hard liquor. Oh, then I'm Luke two cousins. Well. His father and my mother were brother and sister. He is a hell of a character. We've uh, done everything together. We've wrecked motorcycles together, and uh, we've recorded records together. And uh, he's just, he's one of my best friends, and he's my cousin, and he's a good lad. I remember at first, I remember thinking, Luke's really gregarious, very loud, and uh, he is very opinionated. And mm -hmm. at first, it kind of scared me, because we were all kind of like, we were much younger than Luke. Well, not that much younger, but a couple years. He'd had more time in life than he had. <laughs> Luke hasn't been underage since fucking Reagan was in office. <laughs> I, at first I was like, whoa, Luke, Will's cousin, he's really, he's always, he's really pushy. And then I really, probably after about a month of it, I realized that Luke was one of the greatest people I'd ever met in my life. Well, we're gonna give this a try, you guys. How's it going? Happy Saturday night. I'm so glad everybody's here at the Replay Lounge in lovely Lawrence, Kansas. What a lovely day we had today. We spent most of our day over on uh, Kentucky Street barbecuing. It's quite a good time. Quite a good time. We have some friends who came down from Wichita. Anybody from Wichita in the house tonight? All right. All right, you guys. Well, uh, my name is uh, Jarrett Mitchell. I represent an organization called uh, Let's Be Active. Uh, we are currently out of uh, San Francisco, California. Although I've lived in Oakland and in Iowa for a lot of my life. 
I'm here on a tour right now. I'm here with a young man by the name of William Elliot Whitmore. He's going to be here tonight. He's playing some music. The ghost of Abraham Lincoln, one night, comes, hovers over George Bush. <laughs> Be active means bringing people together in a common, ex in a common experience. Uh, 
<laughs> creating a three-dimensional audio environment with the viewer. Yeah, we play. He plays with us in the shadow government when, when we're so lucky. So fortunate, <laughs> so fortunate to have him along. <laughs> Curtis, what does your camera mean to you? How long have you been photographing pictures? Three years. Uh, there is. All right, you guys, I'm so glad we've assembled ourselves here tonight in Des Moines. Now, there aren't as many people as maybe <laughs> we would have liked, but I feel like they are going to really like this a lot. Yeah, anybody that's here will like us. We'll really appreciate yeah, sure. it. Oh, great, I'm so glad that Dominic and Whitney are here tonight with us. Yeah, and too. that Kevin and Jennifer finally got here, too. Yes, yes. And, uh, Let's just yeah. fucking let's do it. Let's be active. Let's go. Yeah. Let's awesome. go. yeah. Oh, so this is the. Let's do something awesome. Too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to. Yeah. So may, I'm gonna do comedy between the acts. I'll start off, and we'll do a stretching thing with Dallas, and then. Yeah. Let's do it. And, uh, and then. Can you see if I? Can you tell me if I have an internal hemorrhoid? Yes. Okay. Later, but after okay. the show. The bathroom has a lock on the stall. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So wait, and then um, yeah. So I'll do comedy throughout the shit, and then we'll fucking. <laughs> Uh, we'll end it with Octopus's Garden. Yep. We'll all stand on stage. Okay. Is that okay? Sounds good. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 yeah. Are you guys ready? Anything anybody else want to say? Or, uh... This is the first time Paradise Island has performed in the state of Iowa. And I think you guys are going to be pretty fucking pleased. Jennifer, are you ready to perform? Um, so, during this time that I've not been playing and I've been talking, kind of been trying to think of what I would play next and um Hey, here's the song about religion and God and the devil and stuff. She was all drunk on moonshine and kept grabbing the mic and screaming into the mic during our set. I thought that they needed a woman on stage with them and uh, that they needed me in particular on stage with them. Uh. 
You know, I, uh, I, I stare, I stare drunkenly at those 1040 forms for hours trying to figure out how the fuck to get it together to kind of get my money back that they've stolen. You know, the f funny thing about the, the thing about taxes is that a lot of people don't know this. When you, you know, the government takes a little bit from your paycheck every time you get paid and, uh, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, hey, it's like Christmas Club, you know, it's really great, you know. The government's taking my money and then I'll get it back, you know, in April or May or some shit like that. The funny thing about that is what the government does is they take all that money that they take from every check every month and then they reinvest that money. So it's like they get, you know, it's like a dollar, two dollars, ten, twenty dollars, however much money you make. But the government takes all that money and then they reinvest that money and they get all the interest from that money. And I think that is kind of funny, you know. I'm here to do stand-up comedy, and uh, when I realized that, I was like, man, that is really funny that they do that, you know? Um. What does LBA mean to you? Let's be active means to me to just simply be active, do what you care about doing, be a positive force in this life, and just uh, keep moving forward. Let's be active. May... Third, 2004, we're in Des Moines, Iowa. <laughs> Great, I'm not. I'm getting a new style all the time. Oh, cigarette, the Whitney. Yeah. How was the tour? Oh, it was amazing. The two-day tour, the shortest one I've ever been. Well, you're gonna be sorely missed, my friend. <laughs> oh, well. Is there any way we can convince you to keep going? Yeah. No, but I'd, I'd rather do that than do what I'm doing. This is Whoopi's big part. Temptation will exalt me head again. I swallow goods all to my bones. Is wrong. Kevin Lips, I am selling shit on tour and helping to move gear in and out of the van. So my purpose is to play the biggest possible part for the good of the team that I can play. We're traveling around the country right now on the Let's Be Active. Um, Let's Be Active to me means. Um, um, it's a, it's a way of life, but it's not a cult. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What we need to do is think about ways in which we can help better the world with every single action that we do every day. We live our lives and we will all die. Everyone in this room was born and each and every one of us will die. Live till you die is another thing that we like to say in Let's Be Active. 
And uh, we just simply need to think about our actions and the way that we live our lives. That's all we're saying. We're just saying, look, can America be a better place? Can there be an energy plan for Western man that means not destroying the entire Earth? I feel that there can be. Last time we played at Big V's, like, it seriously, it felt like... I told Joel on the way over here, it was like one of the best shows that I've ever played, for real. Like, it was a real band, which is weird, because we practiced like two hours before the show. actually and uh, it was awesome he seemed like a real fun guy and uh, and he finally moved to town and it, it was great My well I met Joel I think when uh, um, I met Joel with his band ten grand um, and I can't remember the order of those kind of meetings either I remember meeting Joel at the fireside once no me um. I think I just know Joel from around the Iowa City deal, going to the same rock shows he went to and whatever, and we just eventually became friends. So he went and he talked to his lawyer. Either become his friend or try to beat him up. I, uh, I'm getting audited by the IRS. Uh, my accountant, who did all my work, said I should dress up like I'm really poor, and uh, I uh, I don't know if I should do that. You know, I wanted to come and talk to you. You're my lawyer, and when I fucking had that whole child pornography deal last year, you really helped me out. And I just really was wondering if you could give me any advice at all tonight, if you could tell me something I could do. And his lawyer said, no, 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 don't dress up like you're poor. You should dress up like you're rich, you know. You're a rich man, rich people run this country. And uh, you should just dress up like a rich Call me an effectual a planet human in the early sun. taco eating contests um, that's when he really kind of opened his uh, I mean he'd done stuff in Iowa City like build a BB gun range it's always been about collective interaction with Jared I think in his artwork um, but that's really when let's be active when he he could kind of take all these separate things because you know as Jared when you maybe don't know maybe people don't know but as an artist Jared gets very obsessive case in point the Beatles the Planet of the Apes or you know, but Let's Be Active was really a way for him, I think, to wrangle it all together and, you know, I don't know, bring it into, uh, I think he's more, it's more powerful that way, like to take his stand-up comedy and his contests and all these things and add into one show now. Boys was a, uh, the purveyor and inventor of the idea of the social sculpture. The next image here is an image uh, I took directly. This was a work of art made by a German artist in 1974. His name was Joseph Boys. He took a postcard of the World Trade Center Towers and he wrote on that postcard and he renamed it Cosmos and Damien. The social sculpture takes the idea of a three-dimensional sculpture and it pushes it onto real life. The social sculpture is the idea that we all are creating a three-dimensional 
sculpture every time we commit an action. As we move through our lives and make decisions and things like that. In our lives, everything that we do and everything that we say has an impact. Stockhausen is Wildreich is a uh, German phrase for Stockhausen is truthfulness. Stockhausen was a uh, 20th century German composer. Which in German means Stockhausen is truth. Karl Heinz Stockhausen, a German composer, said that he should quit composing. And uh, maybe some of you guys are familiar with Karl Heinz Stockhausen. He was one of the greatest composers of the 20th century. Because 9-11 was the greatest work of art that was ever made. Uh, right after 9-11, he got into a lot of trouble. And do you guys remember 9-11? The day the eagle wept. Now he got in a lot, a lot of trouble about that. Uh, because he came out and said, you know, I'm gonna just quit composing because uh, the attack on America of 9-11 was the greatest work of art that was ever made. What we're trying to say, we're not trying to say that the attack on America was good. Obviously it wasn't. Social sculpture was at a very crazy point uh, during that time right after 9-11. Each and every life of every person in this entire world is a very, very important thing. Carl Heinz said those things and got in a lot of trouble. Now, a lot of people took this in a lot of weird ways. As we all remember, after 9-11, we all kind of were in a real sticky spot emotionally. We need to re-understand how we view and perceive of 9-11. That we understand what happened in 9-11, not as a fixed event. But we need to kind of re-examine how we can understand these images. That is a knee-jerk reaction where we see the events once again played out on TV over and over. We see an image of it. We need to think of it more in terms of a work of art that we can view from different perspectives as opposed to thinking of it as a fixed image. That we can look at it in different ways and not simply think of fear or anger or using our tax dollars to commit international genocide. What we're trying to say through the use of these three images, let's be active, the Joseph Boys of artwork and the word Stockhausen is truth. Images, pictures, photographs have a very large impact on our lives. That 9-11 was maybe a work of art in the sense that we can see it from multiple perspectives. Instead of a fixed sign that we look at. Yes, fuck me, please. I have been saying that all night. So, that we can use our lives within the social sculpture as something that can be a positive force. Photographs this week, maybe you guys saw the photographs that the American soldiers uh, were taking to the prisoners in, uh, in Iraq. That is the same exact prison that Saddam Hussein tortured and killed people in. We need to take back control of our country. This country, the Constitution, has been usurped by bankers, by politicians, and we need to reclaim our, our place within society. <laughs> Fuck war, bomb, kill babies with my tax money. We should think, look, what can we do to help make the world a better place? I'm not saying, hey, hey, thank you. I'm not saying don't get drunk. I'm not saying don't fucking, you know, skis around and do whatever feels good. I'm just saying, look, we don't have to kill to live our lives, and we don't have to uh, imprison the entire globe in our own country into a prison labor state in which no one has any rights. We can live in a world that at least the seeds of love can be planted, and that we can become slightly better in our lives, and that we can live in a world in which we don't have to kill. A gal said, you think this guy's really part of some sort of an action coalition? Like, yeah, he's the president, the CEO, and yeah, he's, I mean, look at him. Founder. Yeah, I mean, look at him. He's up there taking action. She's like, there is nothing that I find cool about this. <laughs> nothing. I said, well, you know, whatever. Like, that's, you know, that's his deal, and I think it's pretty cool, and whatever. And she's like, well, I guess his code's kind of cool. <laughs> And then Will will just hush the crowd. They'll be like, oh my God. Like right when it's gonna be like a huge altercation with like a seven foot tall, 500 pound bouncer, it's like the light will just come down on Will and he'll play a save the day. Some stripper will light a bunch of candles. Okay, go for it. Well, I think about the kind of, when I think of Let's Be Active, I think about the kind of things that I want to be active about. Specifically, I like to be active in um, trying to um, establish um, a life for myself that I enjoy living. 
and trying to establish um, communities. Check this, check this idea out. Roadkill leather products. Nick, did you hear that? No, somebody does that already? Yeah! Damn! Did it from Kentucky! That was my idea. Was <laughs> that was my... Day six, it's May 5th. It's a good day to be around, I say. For the global shitstorm. This tour is called Keep the Fuzz Off My Buzz, and we're really trying to promote the idea that you stay drunk, stay high, and don't let anyone stop you. But also, mostly, if you don't hurt anybody, keep the fuzz off my buzz means if I'm not hurting anybody, why should I have to do a mandatory minimum sentence? It doesn't make any sense. That is the comedy of the night, right? How's it doing? Yeah. Oh, well, the band's doing real good. Everybody's getting along really good in the band. Um, yeah, we're, I mean, we're psyched pretty much. We, we like playing in Detroit a lot. That's where uh, my singer Wolfie is from. Oh, really? Detroit, yeah. Seriously? Well, he's he's from north of there, but he he claims to be hard. So, I'm from Detroit. But someone told me you weren't actually from there; that you were from north of there, and you just like to sound like you're hard. Who said that? Jenny. I don't want to get her in trouble, but. Well, I was born in Warren, but I. You know, I grew up on the streets. Oh! People always like Wolfie's singing better than mine. You don't get to be a wolf like me without going through some hard times. Hard times. Whoa! Check, check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Whoa. First guy Miller walks up to the bar and he, uh, he says, uh, hey, bartender, give me a shot of blood. I said, okay, I reach under the counter and grab some blood and pour him a shot and pump it up. So we got the drink, got a $10 tip, super excited. Next, Dracula walks up to the bar and he says, uh, he says, hey, bartender, give me a shot of blood. The last Dracula comes up and he just orders a thing of hot water, a little glass of hot water. And I said, I saw you, you kind of, I mean, you're with the Draculas, so either you're going to be dead or soon, or you're a Dracula. <laughs> and uh, he said, no, just give me a glass of hot water, and he uh, reached into his pocket and he fucking pulled out a used tampon and he was like, hey, it's tea time. Tell me where are you going in this tone? Said I'm going down to the Oscars farm. I'm gonna join in a rock and roll band. I'm gonna get back to the land and set my soul free. We are stars. Well, then can I walk beside you? I have come to lose the small heart, and I feel to be a cog in something turned Stardoms, we are good, and we got to get ourselves back to the God. I started 
did Let's Be Active in, um, it must have been July of 2002. Remember a period of time where Jarrett was making his calendars and uh, kind of using them as a medium to express not only his uh, art through drawings, but some of his uh, philosophies. But, so Jarrett was doing all these pamphlets. Um, I should probably take these. Um, but he did one on this organization, Let's Be Active that he was starting. Uh, let's be active. I was more concerned about uh, trying to create something that addressed individuals, that addressed each individual, but also addressed broader issues. That, that kind of like rubbed off on a lot of people that he was around, especially other people who had already similar uh, kind of philosophies about creating these spaces, but maybe weren't as eloquent, and eloquent as Jared about expressing these ideas. More, but yeah, so Let's Be Active was this pamphlet where you um, there was a breathing exercise and a chant. Your social relations of your friendships or your social relations through uh, the products that you buy or the social relationships through the taxes that you pay. So LBA kind of started with a zine. It started with an idea that was a Let's Be Active pamphlet that was discussing an individual's body but also discussing uh, the, uh, the ramifications of every single action that that body then made. First Waffle House we see. We'll pass that Waffle America International. No, 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 no. Waffle House. You guys, you guys don't like the American one? Uh, it's an interesting thought. <laughs> it's like, it depends on how long you want to wait to eat, really. You got a new drummer tonight. Yeah. Hey, I'm Alex, and uh, somehow a fucking <laughs> Joel and Luke and uh, Will, I guess, have uh, talked me into coming out and learning some songs about half an hour before we're going to play them tonight here in Bloomington, Indiana. We've got a drummer that's never even heard us uh, play. We were there and we just walked it's a couple hours from showtime. One of my here. Uh, so, cool. I have a goal tonight. What's that? Oh, I see. Turn on the charm. I'm gonna turn on the charm. Hopefully the stack will do some talking tonight. I've got a goal too. Like. So what I would say is fucking, fuck it, go for it. Buy the Paradise Island 7 inch, buy the Let's Be Active print, buy the Will Whitmore Plastic Trip Split 7 inch, buy the fucking 12 inch, and what, this is what's gonna sweeten the deal. Whoever buys the most merchandise tonight, at the end of the night, wins a 10 minute date with me back in the corner, back there. You guys see that corner back there? We're gonna have a little, just like, whatever you wanna talk about, whatever you think is important, like if you think of me, Sometimes there are other people. 
people and that little voice in their head it's not there and they just keep stepping over people continually and then they get this the next thing you know there's no one left to step over and then what do you have Everybody here in the crowd tonight from Indiana. All right, let's hear it for the Hoosier State. All right, you guys, excellent, excellent. It feels so good to finally be here and to make it to Bloomington. We're on like this is the sixth show of our tour, or something like that. We've been on the road for a while, and it has. Felt good.
needles like a lot of people here have. But I have read this magazine. I studied the history of music uh, for at least six months. And what I've learned throughout these six months is that the Beatles were a very popular combo that started about 1974. There's over 300 exclusive photos of the Beatles in here, including Ringo in blackface as a child. They really <laughs> put Liverpool on the map. Because before it wasn't even on the map, that was the thing. It was a really big town, but nobody knew where it was. I mean, like, you look at a map and it was like... Three, two, one. Fuck. <laughs> recall events as they happen and, and all the little mundane details and things. I try to write all those things down and otherwise I might forget them and so um, I uh, keep in a journal as a way to uh, remember what's happened to me, remember what towns I've been in and um, and yeah like I said it's a thread that runs through my days and so it's kind of grounding as well. There's this table full of folks um, and I just don't feel, I don't, I don't think they were really feeling the show. And Jared's getting ready to do one of his, uh, the Beatles song title contest, and I just hear one gal turn over to a friend the other and say, she said, that is the worst idea for a contest I've ever heard. And, uh, I was always really surprised. I went to my first open mic, and I was really, really surprised at the amount of uh, race humor that I heard. I was like, what the fuck, man? People were just saying the most racist shit, everybody, you know, just like, blah, blah, blah. And so I was like, I was really surprised, but what I realized was, you know, maybe I should come up with a race joke of my own. And then I was like, no, I shouldn't, I shouldn't do anything like that. And then I, it dawned on me, a really perfect, my perfect race joke goes like this. It goes, and this actual, this joke has been going ever since I started talking and it'll continue until I'm done talking. It goes like this. It goes, a uh, white guy talks like this. And so just like whatever the fuck I say, just like that's the punchline of the joke. So like when I started and it wasn't even funny, like that was the punchline and kind of anytime I just talk. So that's kind of the punchline of a joke. S-E-M-E -E. Oh, let's go down Oh, I forgot how to spell it B-A Let's go down into the basement We are standing up on stage We're from Iowa City And there's a band here from Iowa City That I haven't seen perform in a couple of years And if they can remember just one song I'd love to see So just kind of the end of the Let's Be Active tour was um, we, we gave it all we had because we knew that everyone was you know going back you know all this energy and all this planning built into one tight you know nine ten day period and then everyone's got everyone's got to go back there's a little phrase that goes around at Let's Be Active it goes like this security is for prisons Violating my probation by being on this tour, and so fuck you, pigs. Eat, eat dicks. 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 Eat dicks
Six stop picks. and roll. And yeah, it's just uh, it's a bittersweet moment, you know. You don't want it to end, but you want it to. You want to get to Iowa City and play the biggest show of the whole tour. And, uh, so you're expecting Iowa City to be the biggest show? Without a doubt. We have Let's Be Active in the studio with us yeah. right now. Um, Will Whitmore, Jenny from Racerada, Flaccid Trip. Uh, Jarrett Hilarious. Jarrett Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We've been on the tour for a while. We're going to be performing tonight at uh, Gabe's Oasis. Uh, maybe you guys have been there before. It's a wonderful tavern. Uh, I believe our host today, Jason, will be there tonight. I'd like to give a shout out to Burge Dorm, uh, Stanley, <laughs> Courier, all my friends in lockdown at Mayflower. Hillcrest. Yeah, Hillcrest. All of them. But uh, we're going to play some uh, music, I think, in a minute from, uh, Let's be active from the Let's Be Active 12 inch record put out by uh, Modern Radio out of Minneapolis. Uh, they put out this wonderful record, which features uh, tracks from all of us, from Paradise Island, uh, FT, The Shadow Government, William Elliott Whitmore, Let's Be Active, who will all be performing tonight at Gabe's and also at the Record Collector this afternoon. And uh, Luke, you got that guy queued up? What do you think? Uh, I don't know. We'll see how it works. But uh, this is going to be uh, some music. It's making some nice sounds, that's for sure. Good evening. I would like to take this time to thank you for purchasing this record. Thank you. This record features some of the greatest new talent that I've come upon in quite some time. This record features music by William Elliott Whitmore from Montrose, Iowa. Oakland, California's Paradise Island, what a sweetheart. San Francisco's Let's Be Active. And Iowa City's Darling's Flaccid Trip. This record was prepared especially for the Keep the Fuzz Off My Buzz tour of the Midwest in the spring of 2004. In these uncertain times, we can never be too safe. So watch your back, lock your door, light one up, and get ready to rock your ass like you never have before. Check this out. slanted view because I am an employee of the record collector, which I have been for five years, but uh, I believe that, you know, um, most bands don't really have a shot if they're going to go about it from like a punk rock ethic of kind of doing your own thing, touring, like sticking to your guns and try to be who you are. You don't have a prayer of selling records without independent record stores because they're not going to be in Sam Goody, they're not going to be in Best Buy. Like you have to hit a certain number of tens of thousands of records sold for it to show up in a store like that. In a store like this, uh, you know, it, it, the inventory is based on the specific taste of the employees, so you try to get the best staff together that you possibly can and then everybody orders what they really believe in and since everybody here is a music head um, for the most part it's good music uh, now what does that mean for Iowa City well it means that unlike other college towns in Iowa um, Iowa City's got a lot more going on in the music scene it means that clubs can exist uh, and have these little touring bands and still be able to get a couple hundred kids to the show to get them enough gas money to get on to the next town, um, it means that, well, we're basically the only place in Iowa where you can buy independent label vinyl. <laughs> I'd like to introduce you to my good friend and van mate, 
the impeccable and very disrespected Jarrett Mitchell. Hey you guys, how's everybody doing? Pretty good. Alright, I'm going to leave this in the stand just so that it works a little bit better. Uh, we've been on the road here for a little over a week and it has been great. It's really nice to come here to Iowa City where we have all our friends. Looking for the warmth that I felt when I came up. Judging by my head, I think I had too much. What a terrible crime when I do this every night. section of Gabe's Oasis in Iowa City. That's the back door, that's the door up to where their magic happens. And it's really fun carrying all the equipment up those stairs, especially, especially in without, the winter. And that's how we know to get posters up here because we came here doing this. So yeah, that's how these posters are up for the first show where we actually get seating. There'll be some on the front door, there'd be some upstairs because, well, this is our town. Let's be active. Print. Look at this record player. They will be receiving also this one of a kind record player featuring the names of all the bands. Let's be active. The Shadow Government, William Elliot Whitmore, and Paradise Island. This human right here is fucking sweet. This will enable you to listen to records instead of bullshit CDs that won't work in 10 years.
eater from each team. You'll be eating a can of corn, smoking an American Spirit Light, and drinking a pint of Budweiser beer, okay? And it's going to be three teams of three pretty soon here. And I know. Yeah, we got one right here. Okay, young man, what is your name? Drew. Drew, are you eating, drinking, or smoking tonight? Smoking. Okay, smoking. What's your name, young lady? Michelle. Michelle, I really like that Beatles shirt you got on right now. I want to say that they're one of the greatest bands ever. And uh, who else is on your team? Young man, what's your name? What's your name? My name is James. James, okay. So what I want everyone to do is do this. Eaters, line up in the front. It goes eater, drinker, smoker. Line up in the line. Of exposing yourself to someone who's, who's 
whose love is, is so very important to you. Live till you die. Let's be active. Uh, 12 inch continuing to be played on Carry UI 897. Uh, Jared, you want to talk about that audio collage? Yeah. You can explain. That was a collage. beautiful audio collage <laughs> that uh, was helped put together by Let's Be Active. Uh, it was taken. We took a lot of stuff from a lot of different things for that song, but uh, we looped some stuff from the incredible string band in the background, and then uh, those people talking were speakers at a uh, Presbyterian youth convention from 1967 in Southern California, and uh, it's on a record called Youth and Revolution, and uh, that's what Let's Be Active is all about getting you kids ready to realize that uh, it's time for revolution, kids. It's time, and it starts with creating an audio environment that we're going to be... I love music. As a matter of fact, it's the only reason I'm still alive. Well, God bless y'all. Keep your sunny side up and your greasy side down. And don't forget, keep your powder dry and your head up. God bless you. <laughs>